Hey guys, welcome to Harshita Vivek Talks. In today's video, we are going to cover the most frequently asked questions about skilled worker visa. If you haven't watched it already, we have two detailed videos on our channel about this topic. We'll link them here by info cards and also post them in the description box below. So do watch them because they cover the entire process, cost and timeline. But apart from that, there's so many questions you guys have been commenting and DMing us. So we thought, Vivek and I thought, why not cover all those questions in this video? And now, without further ado, let's, let's get, get started. started. A disclaimer before we start, we are not visa consultants, so whatever we are sharing with you is based on our personal experiences and whatever we have seen in our journey of coming from Germany to the UK. So please, uh, we advise you to do your own research and in complicated matters, also take advice of some visa consultants who do this for a living. Question number one, do we have to pay the health surcharge cost again if we apply to update the skilled worker visa when we're changing our employer? So this is a question which many of you have been asking again and again and again. So just to clarify, you pay the health surcharge cost the first time you apply for a skilled worker visa and when you apply to update that visa if you're changing your employer or changing your job, you have to pay it again but but it's not a double payment, you'll get a refund, a partial refund of the earlier health surcharge cost paid back to you. It will be refunded to you. So yes, once that's refunded for the new process, you have to repay the health surcharge cost. So the second question which we get is with regards to validity of your visa. So for the second skilled worker visa, if for example, you are changing companies and you have a new sponsor, which is your new company, the validity of your visa changes. So it might be possible that earlier you had a BRP card which had five years of validity or your visa was valid for five years. But this time around, your new sponsor is sponsoring your visa for three years. So your validity is for three years alone. Question number three, another very important point which we also were confused about was the expiry date on the BRP card. So you'll see when the BRP card comes, the expiry date mentioned on the BRP card will in most cases be 31st December 2024, even if your BRP expires after 2024. Yeah, this is because of the latest government changes what they are doing with regards to digital BRPs. Government is going to make a new BRP system altogether and this is what our visa consultant has told us. This is very common for new BRPs to be valid only till 31st of December 2024. And after that you might be getting maybe a new BRP. Or a digital BRP card is what we have been told. Maybe you, there will not be even a physical BRP which will be available. So just to be clear, the expiry date is not 2024. The expiry date will be whatever is the period three years or five years from the date that you've gotten the visa. But on the BRP card, 2024 might be the date that you might be looking at. So another question which we have gotten from you guys uh, is around traveling internationally. Once you have applied for a visa update process, can you travel internationally with your old BRP card? We have been strictly advised not to travel abroad while your new application is in process. So please wait for your new BRP card to arrive and then you are free to travel anywhere. Question number five is what's the difference between a skilled worker visa and an intercompany transfer visa? So these are two types of tier two visas which you will see here and on the surface of it they look quite similar isn't it Vivek? Yeah it is but I would never want to if for example I want to work in the in the UK I would prefer to have skilled worker visa why because it has it comes with a lot of benefits so the route to PR is a skilled worker visa so if you have the choice please stay in the skilled worker visa itself. Next question once we have the skilled worker visa, can we change into any other visa type or vice versa? Let's say you have come mm. to UK on student visa. This is quite common. And then you want to change into skilled worker visa or your spouse has come on dependent visa and they yeah. want to change in skilled worker yeah. visa or they've come on skilled worker visa and then they want to change into dependent visa. You know, a lot of yeah. permutations mm. and combinations. So answer to all of these is Yes, you can change from one visa type to another visa type given that you satisfy all the requirements, eligibility criteria which are applicable for that visa type. So whichever visa type you want to apply for, go to gov.uk website and see the eligibility requirements and whether you can apply or not apply for it. So guys, you are wondering why do we always take you to gov.uk? In our opinion, I think this is the best source of all the information that you need to know about a particular visa or anything 
that you have doubts about. Always refer to the government site. It will give you the concrete and the latest information. And in UK, given the conditions, a lot of things keep changing on the fly. Yeah. So whatever we are saying is based on what is happening right now, but it might be that they update the conditions one month later, right? So always, always go to gov.uk. So one thing which we have noticed and some of you have asked as well with regards to the BRP changes. Does the BRP number or the visa number changes or even NI number changes? So Harshita, you can tell us more because you have recently updated, right? So when you apply to update your skilled worker visa, let's say if you're changing your job on the new BRP card, your BRP number will change. So that actually changes. And uh, I was surprised to note that the NI number actually doesn't change. So, so it, it remains, remains the, the same. same. So yeah. Uh, it's essentially a new BRP card. Uh, you have to cut the old BRP card and send it back. <laughs> there is a, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but there's a funny story, guys. Uh, yeah, you have to cut the BRP card and send it to, send it back to the government. And I was actually doing the cutting for uh, Harshita's BRP card and you have to send it in two pieces. So you have to cut it in the middle and send it in two pieces, right? If yeah, I remember so it correctly. It should be recognizable. Like Don't yeah. shred it and send it back. But uh, yeah, and I have cut your BRP card into multiple pieces. pieces. So which was, was <laughs> which are fine. still fine. But please do keep that in mind. Yeah. I made this mistake. Um, you please don't do it. Yeah, and you have to send it back, otherwise you get a fine of 1000 uh, GPP. So moving on to our next question. Guys, I'm surprised sometimes by the questions you guys put us. Um, and I, I was surprised by this one as well. So somebody has asked, can you sponsor your own skilled worker visa? So which is a little tricky and I will tell you, you cannot sponsor your own skilled worker visa. You have to have a valid employer, which is listed in the government site, which we have already referenced in our video one. So please go ahead and see that. and then there are a list of employers who can sponsor skilled worker visa and in case there is a new company which wants to sponsor new visas new skilled worker visas they have to apply and send a fees to government and uh, yeah it's a longer route but your company can also do that but you yourself cannot sponsor your visa then you have to take an innovators visa if i'm right there are, there some are other, other visa. visas there are some other visa types where you can self uh, sponsor yourself but not in skilled worker hmm. visa you need to be, as Vivek said, um, an employer who is who's eligible for to doing sponsor. this. So the next question is, do you need to submit your English language documents again? And the answer is no. In the application form, when you will reapply, there is a part where they ask you, have you in the first time submitted these documents, the English language documents? And if you take yes there, you don't need to resubmit these documents again. So they make the process a little more simpler for you. For the second which is time, really good. Which, which is really good. good. The next question is a lot of you are confused about um, when should we resign? When should be the starting date with the new employer? Should we wait till we get the new new BRP and then resign? And, and a lot of such similar questions, right? So it's not a straight, straightforward answer to that. Uh, but let me tell you a few facts. So once you've gotten the new BRP, you can start your job with the new employer up to three months after that. That's the maximum. So let's say you've gotten the BRP today until three months, any time between that, after it, you can start your job with the new employer. And getting the BRP once you've made the application roughly takes around eight weeks. So keeping this in mind and the notice period that you have with your previous employer, I would say resign and if there's a one month, two month notice period during that time, apply for the new visa and by the time your new visa comes, your notice period would have ended and then you can immediately start with the new employer or you can take a small break of one month, two months and then start with the new employer. So you can plan accordingly. Some people want to be very much on the safe side so they want to really wait till they get the new BRP and only then they want to resign. So it's up to you. I didn't do that yeah. but uh, to save time, uh, you know, and start with the new employer as soon as possible. But given these facts, you can plan your starting date and when should you actually apply for the visa update process. One thing that you should keep in mind definitely is that you cannot start working for the new employer until you get the new BRP. So the next question is with regards to the dependent visa of a skilled worker visa. So suppose I'm the person who is on a skilled worker visa and Hachita is my dependent. If my visa is changing, definitely her visa has to incorporate the same changes which have been changed on mine. So for example, my validity has been changed. So her dependent card has to change as well. So there is an impact on the dependent of a skilled worker visa as well. 
but please search on gov.uk website or with the visa consultants what the exact process is we did not go through this process ourselves because both of us have separate skilled worker visas but uh, there's there should definitely be some impact because of the validity date which in case it's changing for the skilled worker visa person so yeah check with the consultants or check on gov.uk website and hopefully you get the answer and share it back with us and and with our viewers as well in the comments below. yeah definitely guys i think it's uh, it's about sharing right sharing is caring so if you know the process and if you have gone through this process please let us know and we will try to also circulate on our instagram channel and other mediums as well and try to spread this information yeah. and guys uh, before we wrap it up uh, we need to give you a little bit of warning please be aware of scammers visa consultants who are promising you skilled worker visa without jobs and all those things which wherein you have these red flags. Without job, nobody will get skilled worker visas. Please be careful and don't spend unnecessary money for these scammers. So always, when in doubt, refer to the government website. Ask YouTubers like us. And if you have doubts, if we have doubts, we will tell you guys. And guys, also uh, just wanted to let you know, we have recently launched our one-on-one -on -one mentorship or coaching calls. So if uh, there are certain queries or questions that you have that are not being answered through the youtube videos or through the instagram reels you want to talk to us one-on-one -on, -one on a call so we will post the link in the description box below go to that link book a session with us and we'll answer all your queries personally yeah i mean who wants to use it like for example i'll tell you if there are students and if there's if there are working professionals who want to understand the job opportunities for that particular field people in uh, it digital area or in business areas strategy consultants or marketeers if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one call and want to understand how could you increase your chances for getting a visa getting a job so yeah you can benefit a lot from our call and from our expertise um, so yeah please feel free to book a call and we'll try our best to help you so hope this video was useful to all of you guys let us know what more questions you have about moving to the uk or about mba or studies in germany and uk and we'll make sure to cover that in our next video till then take care stay safe ciao